The Zen Doctor with Dr. Stephen Simpson. Hi, my name is Dr. Steve Simpson and this is the Zen Doctor podcast channel. Uh, right now, um, I'm on my boat in the estuary, in between the sea and the river, I guess. It's a beautiful day, the weather's not too bad. And when you're thinking boat, uh, this is not a gin palace, it's a very basic 17 foot boat and I'm anchored uh, peacefully at the moment and as Carl Jung said whenever we want to think about things whenever we want to escape from things our instinct is to take to the water because we come from reptiles and maybe that's what I'm doing uh, I've got my fishing rod here which is uh, and the, uh, the hook is hanging in the water but what people don't know is that there's no bait on the hook so when they ask me what I'm doing for hours on my boat, I can say I'm just fishing. And they say that seems to be an acceptable answer. If I say, well, I'm trying to work out uh, the mysteries of the universe and what we're all here for, stuff like that, it's given me a migraine. There'll be lots of why questions. And so this is the shortcut I take, because why questions can give you even more migraines than thinking about the meaning of life. Well, in episode one, I introduced the concept of the Zen mind state because when we uh, when we're relaxed, we achieve more, we have more success, health, wealth, and happiness, and all those good things, uh, with most importantly a lot less stress. Uh, I did mention that this was a journey. Uh, there's no great hard work involved, but um, we do have to touch all the bases between A to Z. And in episode two, we'll be just exploring the introductory comments a little bit further. And then um, I promise you in uh, episode three, we'll get on to some of the more interesting stuff. So that's enough for now for me. I'm going to up anchor and head back into my berth and uh, get back to the studio, which is a little more comfortable, and we'll um, cut to the meat, as they say. Bye for now. In the last episode, we talked about the Zen state of mind and an easier way to live. We introduced the concept of luck with personal examples, and perhaps not surprisingly, we asked more questions than we found answers to. We alluded to the difference between thinking and knowing. The difference is huge. I'll continue and state that I'm hosting this podcast partly for selfish reasons. I know that, to a certain degree, the books that I have written to date finished where I wish they could have started. They were books about success and raising our game, and they worked for many people, including myself. They provided me with material to use in my coaching programs, to use in my talks, and to use in making my videos. They also made me some money, but the most important thing is that they made me think, and I'm still thinking. More importantly, I'm starting to know about some things. Much of my work now is based around the enduring concept of luck, and I believe that luck is not random, and I'm not alone. Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte only appointed his generals from the small pool of officers he considered lucky. Tennis champion Roger Federer knows that when he's facing defeat, he needs a miracle. He needs to find a way to put luck on his side. I wrote and talked about luck from a predominantly research and analytical background. In my book, Get Lucky Now, I talk about the seven secrets of successful people. I explained that I can guarantee that almost everybody can attract at least a little more luck into their life if they read this book. The reason I can say this with some confidence is that six of the seven secrets that I wrote about are based on logic and are well proven throughout history. It's only in the final chapter that I start to feel a little braver. I start to write in more detail about some of the results that my clients have enjoyed and that I introduced in the last episode. The ones that defy logical explanation or conventional arithmetical analysis. I didn't know what to call this final chapter, and after much thought, I settled on just one word. Magic. I gave a few hints of where the magic might come from, 
and how we might be able to use it ourselves, but I left most, if not all, of these questions unanswered. Looking back, I think I did this for two reasons. First, because I didn't know the answers, and secondly, because I didn't wish to be considered uh, either a lunatic or a fraud. So as a result, the book was written to some extent to appeal to as many people as possible, and as a result, drifted away from the magic that was almost certainly the most important part of it. This podcast channel is my chance to put the record straight and say what I really think, but in humility, recognising that my beliefs are just that, firmly held convictions, but still only personal thoughts. This podcast is for both of us. Preparing each episode will make me think, and some of these thoughts are likely to be painful. These thoughts just might be the thoughts that will be the most important for both of us. This podcast is also different because, unusually for me, I have no plan. I have no idea how many series and episodes there'll be. There are no mind maps, nor are there any pages of scribbled thoughts to guide me. There's nothing apart from my laptop and a studio microphone. I mentioned last week that my goal this year was to keep life simple, and a weekly webinar and podcast were definitely not part of the plan. I'd reckoned without the unwelcome pandemic influenza, and as a result, all our lives have changed dramatically. Many of my projects disappeared overnight, and I unexpectedly had time on my hands. I started warming to the idea of hosting my own podcast. I didn't know where to start, but answers started to appear. I guess I got lucky. Because if I've learnt one thing, is that the best things that have ever happened to me were never on a plan, or at least they weren't on my plan. I've learnt the hard way that the enemy of the best is the good. Settle for being good, and you'll be unlikely to become excellent. I find not having a plan exciting, but it's a different type of excitement. It's an excitement that leaves all options open. If only one of these formless options or opportunities takes shape, it could easily be the best thing that's ever happened to me. But of course, the problem is, is that none of us really knows what the best thing is, or even what constitutes a worst thing for that matter. So if you're feeling confused, then all I can say is that I am too. But I do have an overwhelming feeling that there will be something valuable in this podcast for both of us. It'll not come from me, it will come from magic. In the next episode, I'll examine our murky past and discuss one of our biggest mistakes. One that we all continue to pay a heavy price for, but one which is fortunately reversible. Keep listening, because you will not win if you do not put yourself in the game. In the meantime, stay well and reflect on what you think and what you know. To give you a little nudge, most of what you think is an illusion. Most of what you know is likely to be a universal truth. So that's more than enough for today. Goodbye for now. If you have enjoyed The Zen Doctor with Dr. Stephen Simpson, then why not hit the subscribe button? The music, The Soul of the Shaman, was specially composed for The Zen Doctor. To find out more, go to drstephensimpson.com.